Hi everyone, how exciting is this? A brand new Distress Oxide series. Now, for 2024, I'm going to be sharing with you my technique for mixing Distress Oxide to create new colours. Now, not only are we creating new colours, stay tuned to the end because I'm also going to show you how to mix this particular colour that we're focusing on today, and that's Abandoned Coral, with other colours to create shades that are already in the range, that are very similar. And that's great as a substitute if you don't already have some colours in your stash. So I'm going to also give you a download as well. I'll explain more about that towards the end too. But we, like I said, we're going to be focusing on Abandoned Coral. Now this is only for Distress Oxides. There is a reason this doesn't work for Distress Inks. Now to understand that, we need to understand the difference between inks and oxides. So take a look at this and that will hopefully explain why we cannot use inks for this method. So to understand why we can only use the Distress Oxide for this layering technique and not Distress Ink, we need to understand how the two are different and how they work on paper. So Distress Ink is made up of a dye and the dye is completely saturated within a liquid. When you put it on top of paper, those colour particles in the liquid soak into the paper. Now an oxide is made up of a dye and a pigment, so it has a dye base which will soak into the paper as well, but it also has pigment particles, pigment particles. Now these are going to not soak into the paper. If you imagine mixing sand and water together, and that's basically how pigment mixes into water, it doesn't actually get into the liquid, it just floats around as particles in there. And it's that pigment of the oxides that sits on top of the paper, it doesn't soak in. So although we have a dye in both inks and oxides, with the oxide we have the additional pigment. This gives it its really vivid colours, it gives us the ability to layer and mix colours as well, and it also gives us more of an opaque look too. Now because the dye in inks actually soaks into the paper, that means that that dries a lot quicker and we really don't have time to be mixing the different colours together. It can be done but it's really not easy and you do have to work super quick. With pigments they sit on top of the paper much much longer, we have time to blend them and mix them together before they dry. So let's get in with mixing some of these colours. As I say, Abandoned Coral is going to be our main colour today. I'm going to mix this with five other colours from the Distress range and create new shades for you to use in your paper craft projects. I am going to compare them to my colour chart here so you can see whereabouts they would sit with your other colours. And like I say, I do have a download chart that you can print off at home and fill in so that you can keep a track of all these new shades that we're creating. As always, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So I'm going to first mix Stormy Sky and Abandoned Coral. Now it does not matter, and I have tried and tested this, it does not matter which colour you place down first, but it is really important that you are working quite quickly with these and that you're not letting one of them dry before you go and add the second colour. So Abandoned Coral is a beautiful dark coral colour, so I'm going to place this down. Now I'm working on watercolour cardstock for this, and as I explained in that brief video a moment ago, the pigment is going to sit on the top of this paper. So I'm going to fill this square with Abandoned Coral, and I can come back to this if I feel I need to do some more mixing. I'm then going to take some Stormy Sky and place this over the top. Now this is probably my favourite mix of all of the shades that we're going to be creating today. So take a look at this, absolutely gorgeous. Now you can make these shades ever so light, ever so slightly darker, lighter, more pink, more blue by adding more of one colour, but in general I like to saturate the paper with both shades. So we can see there we've created a stunning purple mauve colour, it's a dusky purple, it's not the same as dusky dusty concord, it is different. So let's just place the lids on these so they don't dry out. So like I say this is stormy sky and let's just put this against the purples that we already have. 
Now hopefully you can see how this is has more of a grey tone to it. It has more of a dusty or dusky tone to it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now let me just show you also what might happen if you add pink on top or abandoned coral. You get a slightly warmer shade of this. Now this is where it turns into my favourite. This is unlike anything else in the Distress range now. So I've gone with Abandoned Coral on the bottom, Stormy Sky in the middle, then Abandoned Coral again on the top. And you could easily blend this into one or the other colours as well. But again, now let's take a look. I've always said there is a colour like this missing within the Distress Ink and Oxide range. That's my personal preference because I really love this colour. But as you can see, they're really, it's, it's almost a darker shade of Victorian velvet, but there isn't anything else there that it can possibly compare to. In fact, let me know in the comments, what would you call this? That's a really good fun game. Let me know, what would you call this first shade? Now we've still got four more colours to mix abandoned coral with. So I'm just going to clean up my work surface and work on the next colour. So next we're going to be mixing Abandoned Coral with Hickory Smoke. So it's well worth mixing all of your colours with various greys and picket fence as well to see what shades you create. Um, I really love this one again. So let's start with Abandoned Coral first. Like I say, it doesn't really matter which way round you put your inks. Definitely try both if you think it's going to make a difference. If they are shockingly different colours, uh, you never know, you might get a slightly different shade. But if you're just looking for fresh new colours, try both ways out. But I've found in general it really doesn't make a lot of difference at all. So there's my abandoned coral. And then hickory smoke over the top. Now this is a lovely colour as well. It really is a nice warm grey. Kind of a brown as well. I say kind of a brown because it's got that red in it but I think it still sits within the greys, but I still found it was also sort of leaning towards a purple too. So let's just cover this area. I've got a smaller blending brush for this one. But you can see we get a lovely smooth blend, absolutely perfect of those two together. Isn't that lovely? So now we've got a much warmer, kind of almost an orange brown colour there. Let's take a look at how this thing compares to others that we already have in the Distress Oxide range. So I think this one, it does have a similarity with Aged Mahogany. We'll come to that in a moment. As you can see, the oranges, it's definitely a darker shade of Abandoned Coral. I didn't do brilliantly blending that in. Let's just give that a little more of a blend in there. Neaten that up just a little bit. And obviously as it dries it does fade. Let's look at the red. So it's definitely darker than Festive Berries. I think it's kind of a lighter shade of aged mahogany which again is a sort of your burgundy colours are definitely some that I feel are maybe missing from the distress range there's only so many colours that Mr Holtz can come up with I know that you know it's impossible to have every single shade ever imagined let's look at the oranges as well it's much darker than those and I will go to the browns too uh, there towards the back and then you can really see how much more red that is isn't that gorgeous now bear in mind i'm mixing these on paper mixing the pigment element of them definitely try them out mixing the two colors and spritzing with water and seeing what happens to them then as well so the next blend that i'm going to do is mermaid lagoon now as you can imagine a red and a blue we'd hope to see a nice purple here. Now what you will find is with each colour, if you're going through like me and mixing one particular colour with lots of others, you will find that you'll get quite similar shades of colours or quite similar colours throughout all of the mixes because you've got the same sort of base here. But across the range, once you start getting into mixing all of your colours with lots of others, you're going to have a plethora of new colours and shades for you to play around with in your craft projects. So this next square is going to be Mermaid Lagoon. Just a tip for you if you do it like myself, whether you are inking along with me or whether you're going to go away and do something similar later on for your colour chart that I'm going to explain to you at the end. 
do try and make a note of these as you're doing them. It's very easy to get really excited about mixing new colours and then forget which is which. So make sure you're doing that as you work. Now, Mermaid Lagoon. I'm going to go right onto the aged mahogany there. Sorry, it's not aged mahogany. It's abandoned coral there. Now, this gives us... It is a blue. I'm actually going to, with this one, because the blue is so strong, I'm actually going to put a little more of the um, abandoned coral over the top, I think. I'm going to give that a good mix. That is a really nice blue, definitely a deep dark purple. Now it's not actually contaminating my brushes too much either. I'll get a little bit, a little bit of the previous color on there, but not too much. And I do get a lot of questions about cleaning brushes off and such, and you can easily do that with just a piece of kitchen towel, just wipe the excess off. You can see I've got a bit, or a little bit of blue on there. I'm just going to take some dry kitchen towel and just brush that excess off on there. And there we go, that's absolutely fine to use now. The same if I had any, I don't think I did, but if I had any on the Mermaid Lagoon. So there, we've got another kind of dusty uh, purple color, a deep blue purple. Let's go to the purples and see how this sits. Now what I have also done for you, and I will do for each of the videos, is I have found that uh, some colours just make basically shades that are already in the range. And I will list a couple of those for you for each colour as well. So you can see Dusty Concord is much more blue. It's much, much darker. If we come to the blues though, you can really see that it is more of a purple isn't it it's, it's a deeper darker shade of weathered wood um chipped sapphire and let's just see because we do have villainous potion at the top here it's not quite as red or as bright as villainous potion it's definitely got that dusty look to it cloudy look to it so there's three new shades we've created already now let's move on to salvage patina so salvage patina is kind of a green, a blue green. So you'd expect this to almost go into a brown. We're getting an awful lot of purples throughout these. And probably because I'm using quite blue colors, I've used two blues and a gray. This is almost a blue. Um, but I do find that some of the colors when they're mixed with abandoned coral, kind of just turned muddy, and that's not what we want. So I didn't worry about showing you those ones. Um, I will go into a yellow in a minute and show you what that looks like, because that's a lovely colour as well. So it really brightens up the coral. But we can see there, we've got a lovely, a lovely mauve, again, what I call a mauve colour. Really beautiful. Let's just wipe the surface there so we can see that. Now any patchiness will dry, that's where the dye sitting on the top let's take a look and make sure we've got nothing similar i think it's kind of almost victorian velvet like which we'll have a look at not too far off saltwater taffy let's find let's see so it is definitely a lighter shade of aged mahogany it's almost like aged mahogany would then go with the hickory smoke blend and then go into the salvage patina blend that would make a lovely ombre um and then uh, what was the one i was going to look at in the purples i've never known why it sits with the purples but victorian velvet so it is a darker kind of a darker shade of victorian velvet there so three new shades for you let's do one more with that lovely bright squeezed lemonade yellow so there's my abandoned coral laid down now this lovely bright yellow makes the most beautiful shade so take a look at this. It lightens and lifts and brightens the abandoned coral amazingly. We do get another coral color. It's more of a peach color though. It's definitely brighter. Very, very summery. I really love this shade. I think it's going to be fun for beach themes, for cocktails, those sorts of cards that you might be doing. Let's just give this a wipe and compare that. I mean, look how bright that is. That is definitely a bright peach colour, isn't it? So that's squeezed lemonade. Let's now just take out our oranges and see where that sits. So these are here. This colour chart you can download from my blog as well. I'll link that down below. 
Um, for this one, it's not filled in already. You do need to fill it in at home. It's a great way for you to keep a track of what you've already got and what you still need to get. So looking at these, it's kind of spice marmalade, um, dried marigold, a little bit lighter than ripe persimmon. I feel it's got more of a pink tone than these two, but it is lighter than ripe persimmon so uh, let's just add a little more pink over the top actually because you can play around with this and then we get more into the paler ripe persimmon sort of color the pinky peach tones i call this one peach melba i think that's peach and raspberry isn't it so I mentioned a download for you. Now this is a simple chart that you can print off at home and fill in in the way that I've just done. And you can print them off for absolutely any color because I've left the name at the top free for you to write your name in. You can write which colors you've mixed to create your swatch. Now I've just die cut a square, you can trim a square or a circle, whatever it may be, from your swatch that we've just been doing. I've also added a bit down the bottom as well. And this is, um, when colours seem to just look like other colours in the range but it may be handy to keep a note of. So for example with this one, so with abandoned coral, if you mix it with faded jeans you actually get what looks very similar to dusty concord. There's my swatch and I did also spritz that with water just to see what it would look like. The colours don't really separate, they just look beautiful as they always would with distress oxide mixed with water. And if you mix abandoned coral with picket fence you actually get something very similar to saltwater taffy so a lighter shade of it which makes sense but again worth noting in case you need saltwater taffy for any reason and you don't happen to have it now I've left myself here today a square free it may be that as I work through this series I actually find another color that I'd like to add to this particular sheet or I may not some of these videos I will do three or four different mixes some of them I will do six plus it will just see how the colors go and how they start mixing but as I say this is available link down below it's on my blog you can print this off you can print this color chart off as well and you can fill that one in I've also got the color chart here on one sheet that is colored in for you so you can just print this off in color so you've got that as a handy at a glance chart to have in your craft room to help you so hopefully this has given you lots of new ideas and opportunities with the distress oxide um please do let me know like i say what what would you call these new colors this is definitely looking more sort of a lighter shade of aged mahogany now they're really beautiful i love these colors um i'm excited obviously there's 71 colors in the range I could mix try mixing band and coral with absolutely any one of those other 70 colors and see what shades come out you do your own mixing by all means and let me know what you discover now I'm going to be uploading a new video each week with a new uh, new color and new mixes of that color I won't necessarily be working in alphabetical order though because I think I will just reach for the ones that I feel will have the most options for you for new colors so keep tuned to the playlist for this series and please do like I say let me know in the comments what you think to it and do thumbs up if you like it and subscribe so that's everything for today take care everybody and I'll see you again very soon